everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to determine the slope at a point and the tangent line at a point without using derivatives. So these are the types of examples that you would see probably at the beginning of a calculus course. So to, here's, here's specifically what we're going to be looking for. Find the slope of the curve at the given point and the equation of the tangent line at that point. So here are the three functions that I'm going to do this for. So it's probably easiest actually if I break this down. So um, if you if you already kind of know what you're doing, you can um, you can just fast forward to the example that you want to see, or you can use this these three examples as kind of a way to quiz yourself. But if you have no idea, so here's kind of what we're getting at. So first of all, let's just investigate what do, what does this two three mean, just to make sure that we've got that. So this is literally just plugging that point in. And you, you'll you see, right, so if I plug in 2, I get out 3. So this is a point that is actually like part of the function. So if we looked at the graph, this would be a point that's on, on the, the, the function. Okay, now here's the way that we're going to do this. We're actually going to use the difference quotient. And the difference quotient looks like this. So where we're going to start actually is we're going to just evaluate this as far as we possibly can. So I'm going to plug in first f of x plus h. So maybe maybe what I'll do actually here, let me see. I will take um, I will take this f of x plus h. So I'm going to evaluate this in green just so you can kind of follow along with me. So basically for this first part here, I'm going to plug x plus h into the function. So where I had an x, now I'm going to have an x plus h. So now instead of this being x squared, it's going to be x plus h squared, and then I still have to do the minus 1. So here's the minus 1. So there's the first part, so that's the part in green. And then I'm going to subtract off, and I'll, I'll do this in yellow just so you can kind of track the different pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and subtract off what my f of x actually is. So here's the part that I have to work out on top, and then all of this is divided by h. Okay, so we're just going to now sort this out as far as we possibly can. So just working out the part that's in green. So this will be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 1. And then from there I need to subtract off still this x squared minus 1. So this will be, I'll, I'll go ahead now and I will distribute this minus sign kind of into this so we can keep moving along with this problem. So this becomes minus x squared plus 1 all of this over h. Okay, so as you look down the problem now, you can see a bunch of stuff that's going to cancel out, right? So I'm going to have that my x squared actually cancel out, my 1 cancels out, and so now let's just summarize what we're left with. So let me clear a little space. So now I've got more room, so now I can see that I am left with 2xh plus h squared, all of that divided by h. Now, out of the top, I can factor out an h, which will then allow me to cancel out the h's right here, like so. So now I'm left with just 2x plus h. So I was working out the difference quotient as far as I possibly could. So now that I'm here, what do I do? Well, the thing that makes a, a tangent line what it is, so a tangent line will have an h equal to 0, at least in this case. So we're kind of simplifying this. This isn't totally mathematically correct, but just as kind of an introduction to this, the idea behind the tangent line is that the difference between um, x and kind of the next point is as close to 0 as possible. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, what are you talking about tangent line and difference of x and all this stuff? I have a whole video where I actually break down um, kind of the, the idea behind the tangent line. So I highly recommend that you watch that. It's kind of my introduction to calculus. And I think by understanding this, it makes sense why you're doing this. So if it bothers you just to blindly follow steps with no idea why you're doing it, highly recommend you check that out. Okay, so with that being said, then the, the slope of the tangent line or at this point will just be found by 2x. Okay, so that was because I plugged in h equals to 0. So if I plug h equals 0 into this, I am left with 2x. So this is the form of my slope. So now what this means is that I plug my point in to this. So now I want to plug in to 3. Now, notice from this point, this, this equation here is only in terms of x, so I just need the x part of this. 
So my, my slope then at the point will be m equals 2 times 2. So my slope will be 4. Okay, so we've got that. Let me clear some space. And so now I've got that, that first part of this that I wanted, right? The, the first part of this was to find the slope of the curve at the given point. So we have done that here. Next, we need to find the actual tangent line. So to find the tangent line, so you need a slope. Um, to, to find the equation of any line, really, you need a slope. In this case, that's 4. And you need a point. So there's my slope. There's my point, right? So I found the slope in this portion. The point was what was given to us up here. So now I'm going to use the good old point slope formula, which looks like this, to figure out what is the equation of my tangent line. So to figure out my tangent line, then, I'll just plug in the 3, the 4, and the 2. And so why don't we put this into slope intercept form just to make it look nice. So this will be 4x minus 8. And then I can go ahead and add 3 to each side. So I get y equals 4x minus 5. And so then there's the two pieces of this. There's my slope at the point 2, 3. And here's the tangent line at the point 2, 3. Now, why don't we take a second just to figure out what did we actually find? What does this mean? So let's take a let's take a quick field trip. So this is one of my favorite websites, uh, Desmos.com. And so now what I want to do is I actually want to plug in just some of the information we were just looking at. So the initial function we were working with was this function x squared minus 1. So let me color this function. Oops, let me color it in black. So there's x squared minus 1. And now I just want to note the point 2, 3. So I'm going to mark that point. Let's mark it in red. Okay. So the next thing that we did then was we found both the slope at this point and the tangent line. So if I plug in what that tangent line was, it was 4x minus 5. So I'm going to make this a red dotted line just to make it nice and clear. So you can see here that this is a line that runs tangent. So it really is like a, a line that is only kind of touching, just grazing that function at that 1.23. So it's grazing it just there. And so because this is the tangent line, this will also be, this, this will represent the slope at this point. And we also found the tangent line. So this is kind of what, what we're trying to do in these exercises if you're unsure. So this is always a really great website to use if you ever are like, what, what am I actually looking at here or what am I trying to figure out? By graphing it all out, it should all kind of tie together like this. And if I zoom in a little bit so you can see kind of even better how this is just perfectly intersecting. So it's, it's a really um, nice visualization. Now we're going to take a look at the next example, which maybe you want to pause and try it on your own and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So just like before, we can once again see that this, this point that we're given, we, we trust that this is basically, so if I, if I plug everything in, this gives me 4 minus 8, so this equals negative 4. So I can see that this point is part of the function. And so now I basically have to do that same thing again with the difference quotient. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in x plus h into the function. So here's plugging x plus h in. Oops, and this is minus 4 times, sorry, x plus h. Didn't read that all the way. And then I subtract off the function itself like this. So as you can see, this has a bit more work to it. So you might want to pause the video and try to kind of sort all this out and see if you can solve this all the way. And I'll go ahead and work this out too so you can see the details. Okay, so now you can see kind of everything that goes into this. And so now I'll make my cancellation. So let's see, this x squared and this x squared cancels out. The four x's drop out. So that looks like everything that's going to drop out. And so I've got um, h squared plus 2xh minus 4h, all of this divided by h. 
So if I divide each piece now by h, I'm left with h plus 2x minus 4. Okay, so taking that result, let me clear off some space. This is the result of the difference quotient, and to interpret this now, I need to set h equal to 0 because that's what will give me the tangent line or the, the equation for the slope of the tangent line. So my, my equation for the slope of a tangent line is 2x minus 4, so this is the equation for the slope of the tangent line, okay? So now I need to plug in this 2, negative 4 into this. So notice that looking at this, so this only has an x in it, so I just need the x part of this coordinate again. So my slope at this point then will be 2 times 2 minus 4. So this actually just equals 0. So my slope is equal to 0. So now if I try to use my point slope equation, so you might already know where this is going. Oops, and this is x minus x1. So I'm going to use my slope here and this point. So this will be y plus 4 equals 0 times x minus 2. So I really just get y plus 4 equals 0, so then I get y equals negative 4. So my two things here then, my slope at the point is 0, and the equation of my tangent line is negative 4. So once again, why don't we just now verify this with a graph. So let me plug in that equation. It was x squared minus 4x. And I'll zoom out a little bit here just so we can see this a little bit better. And once again, so I'll make this the nice solid black color. And then the point that we were looking at was 2, negative 4. And so I'll make that once again in red. OK, so we can see where it's at, right? So it's right here at the tip. So if you now just try to visualize what the tangent line looks like, so if you just try to visualize what a tangent line would look like here, it should be something horizontal, right? And that is literally what we found, right? So I found, I found y equals negative 4 was my um, tangent line, and so there it is, boom. So you can see how this all kind of ties together. So for this last example, we're going to do the same thing again. This one's going to be maybe a little bit trickier. So I'm going to start by plugging in x plus h into my function. And then I subtract off just plugging, or just the function, and then all of this divided by h. So here's my difference quotient one more time, although this problem looks significantly different. So basically now what you've got to do is you've, you've got to clear these, these fractions however you want to do that. So if you want to get a common denominator, you can do that. Personally, what I like doing is I like multiplying by the LCD of the two fractions. I find that that's the best, but when you do that, you have to do that um, on the top and on the bottom. So actually, first let me just move the, the problem. Okay, so I just wanted to give myself just a little more space. So the, L, the, the least common denominator of all the fractions that we're looking at is x plus h and x. So I like this method because it just it gets rid of fractions right away. But the thing is you have to multiply this on top and on bottom, and you have to multiply everything by this. So here's what I mean. I have x plus h times x. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by that. I'm going to have x plus h times x. I'm going to multiply this fraction by this. And then I'm also going to multiply the bottom here. So you literally multiply everything in the problem by this LCD. And so as you look at this, so I know this kind of looks like a, a lot to look at. But so check it out. The x plus h's cross out here in this little cluster of multiplication. And then here, when I multiply this fraction times this, so the x's will drop out. So just take a look at then what I'm left with. So I'm left with this x and this x plus h. So on top, I'm left with this x minus x plus h. And then in the bottom, I'm left with xh times x plus h. OK, so let's just leave that alone for a second so that we can kind of work this out. So if I work out the top, so what does the top become now? Well, the top will become x minus x minus h. So I know I'm, I'm going through everything kind of at a lot of detail here, but I just want to make sure I catch it all. So I can see now by looking at this that I'm left with negative h over xh times x plus h. And this is good because now I can cancel out these h's. 
So I'm left with negative one over x times x plus h. Okay, so there's as far as I can go with the difference quotient. So now let me clear some space so we can keep going with the problem. Oh, and, and before I do that, so this is just one method of how you can do this. I, I just think that this is like the quickest way to get rid of the, the fractions, so that's why I like using this. But you could have found a common denominator and gone a different route, and that's fine too if you did it a different way. But this would have been the, the ultimate result that you should have still gotten. Okay, so there's my difference quotient. So now I'm going to do that thing I do where I say that I need to set my h equal to 0. So if I do that, I'm actually left with negative 1 over just x times x, right? So this equals negative 1 over x squared. So there's the, the equation um, for the slope um, at the point. So my slope in this case then, so once again, I plug in this slope into this equation. So this will be one negative 1 over 2 squared, so my slope is negative 1 fourth. Okay, so now I've got my slope, so let me clear some space and then we'll come up with the tangent line. So I've got my y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So this will be y minus 1 half equals negative 1 fourth, oops, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth times x minus 2. So then I'm going to get y minus 1 half equals negative 1 fourth x plus 1 half is what that's going to come out to. And so now I can go ahead and just put this into slope intercept form. So the equation of my tangent line then is going to be negative 1 fourth x plus 1. And so just one more time, why don't we just take a look at this at desmos.com and we can um, just verify what we're looking at here. So here I am again at desmos.com. So here's my function. So I've got 1 over x. So here's what that looks like. So once again, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me start over. y equals 1, oops, y equals 1 over x. I can't type here. So I'm going to once again, okay, it's already in black, so we're good to go. So the point that I wanted to mark here was 2, 1 half. So there it is. It's already in red for us. So we're good to go on that. So you can see there's our point that we have. So now if I plug in what I found for that tangent line, this was negative 1 fourth x plus 1. And see how it just perfectly grazes that tangent line and it looks perfectly tangent. So once again, we found exactly what we needed to find. So that was what we wanted to do. And so that'll do it for this set of examples. So hopefully seeing the graphs kind of helps ties it together. Sometimes I know when you're working on these, it's like, oh, why am I doing this? What am I trying to find? So it's something very specific that we're actually looking at. So I find looking at the graph really helps to bring that alive. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And otherwise, hopefully I'll see you guys next time.